This is f***ing great! Good morning everybody! Good morning from the BBC. It is 8am sharp. Morning Dan. Dan, you should not be awake. It is far too early for you. It's so early I'm, I'm sort of whispering. Good morning to you Dan. I'm, I do appreciate you getting up for this. Cheers mate. Mine is a decaf but I just had a caffeinated one which is very rare for me to have a real caffeinated tea. I just had one and I tell you what mate, it's about to go off. I can feel it tingling and tangling in my toes and my fingers. What I do know is we're about to do something really, really strange. We're about to do something we've never done before, which is to utilize, how can I put this? The scourge on humanity that is AI. And we're gonna try and use that for good today. We're gonna to put a prompt into chat GPT and we're gonna ask it to write us a brief and we're going to attempt to score a pretend film with said brief. Now AI is likely to put me out of a job uh, if you can call what I do a job but for now we'll, we'll try and see the funny side and we'll use it for good. I've got a prompt ready and this is going to hopefully trigger a perfectly put together song brief for an orchestral movie score. It could either be really good or just shit, just a bit shit, but you know, it all really depends on the prompt. But you know what? This is me putting my songwriting prowess on the table for all to see and to say, you know what? I'll take anything you got. You give me a prompt. You give me a brief. I'll nail it. All right. We've got ChatGPT open here. I've never used this before. I'm not really uh, sure what it's going to throw up. I'm going to paste it in. Give me a random film score brief to compose music to. I need to have a place, a character, and what is happening to the character. The place, character, and what is happening do not need to relate to each other and should all be individually random. I am hoping for madness. Let's f***ing roll that dice, people. All right, here we go. Oh my God, it's just, it's just like that. It's instant. Oh, this is crazy. Okay, here we go. Certainly, here's a random film score brief designed to inspire madness. Title eccentric echoes place an abandoned lighthouse on a desolate island i'm already loving this i already have ideas this is great character professor ignat <laughs> what the character is called professor ignatius quill bluster you cannot we literally cannot write this but somehow ai does okay quirky bespectacled or not ornithologist okay so this guy studies birds in a lighthouse I mean, I am really liking this brief already. This is something else. What is happening to the character? Okay. Professor Quillbluster has stumbled upon a hidden chamber deep within the lighthouse. I'm loving this. Inside, he discovers a collection of ancient, mysterious bird-related artifacts. As he examines these relics, he becomes increasingly obsessed with deciphering their secrets. I feel like we're doing story time right now. This is great. I could not have asked for a better brief. Believing they hold the key to unlocking the language of birds, his obsession spirals into madness as he starts hearing the voices of imaginary feathered creatures and he begins to communicate with them through peculiar nonsensical rituals. The music you compose for this scene should capture the eerie, whimsical and disorientating atmosphere of the abandoned lighthouse, Professor Quillbluster's descent into madness, and the strange otherworldly communication with the imaginary birds. This is mental. Use unconventional instruments. Oh, that's okay. Dissonant chords and erratic rhythms to convey the sense of chaos and eccentricity. Feel free to incorporate bird-like sounds and unconventional vocalizations to add an extra layer of surrealism to the score. I have to say, I think humans are done. I don't think we're needed anymore. I honestly don't think humans are necessary on this planet after reading that. That is unbelievable. So maybe we'll start writing a list of the key points. We're gonna write about a lighthouse. It's on a desolate island, so desolate, eerie, just get some key things down here. I mean, it's coming to me already. He's kind of this spectacled, lonely guy. I guess I see like lonely birds for some reason. Unusual instruments. Spiral into madness. Mystery, I think is gonna be a big, a big factor here. Dissonant chords. Uh, let's put waves. Let's get some waves splashing. Let's get some visual imagery going with waves hitting against the lighthouse. The fact he's hearing voices 
as well. I want to do some unusual panning, you know, like little tweets from the birds, perhaps. I'm feeling already like the lighthouse and the professor are conjuring up like a harpsichord. He's this studious professor. To me, that's like a Baroque harpsichord sound mixed with the lighthouse. I think of like an accordion, maybe for some reason, some sort of accordion sound. I've already got ideas. I think Spitfire is going to be good for this. I'm just going to catch up with the chat. This is this is great, by the way. I'm loving this. But I already love the character. Like I already feel like um, Professor Ignatius Quillbluster. I already feel like I'm on a personal journey of discovery with him. Is the flugelhorn an unusual instrument? I suppose it is. But would the flugelhorn represent the place or character? Probably not. What does it represent? It must be whimsical. So potentially we could introduce the flugelhorn. In fact, maybe we could. We'll put that on the back burner. Albion Solstice from Spitfire. I'm going to try and use this actually for most of this because I feel like this sound here, which is like an accordion sound. All right, so we've got a really good sound there to start with. That to me sounds like a lighthouse. I'm going to start by getting the sound palette together, I think, first. I'm thinking like a waltz. Dum, 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 dum. This professor studying, he finds this trap door in the lighthouse, he finds it, he goes into the basement, and then he's finding these artifacts, and it's all a little bit eerie and a little bit spooky. And then you've got the waves crashing against the lighthouse, and then you've got the rhythm increase, and then it's he's spiraling into madness as he realizes he's got the tweeting of birds and yes I can totally feel this now so we'll build slowly and I think we'll start just with this sound here and we'll create a waltzy bum 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 so the first thing I'm going to do is change that to three four time and let's get a tempo going so I'm thinking like something like that a bit faster so maybe we'll go for like a 180 BPM, one maybe one seven five. Yeah. So that's the melody. I mean, that's that's it that's that's like that's your melody for the character done um and it sort of encapsulates a little bit of the lighthouse but i'm gonna get more of that the second time around we should probably make it differently as well ah oh, we're gonna make this big and it's gonna go piracy too something like that and we'll do the same business to this we're gonna quantize the shit out of it i'm just gonna hit q together with that That's fucking great. And you're just waiting for those pivot points where you change the chord, so. That should be major, so we're moving the third up one. In fact, all of these might sound better lower down, so we'll go like that. There you go. It's like something out of a Zelda game or something. It's very much Song of Storm, isn't it? I actually feel like those notes might be better off being a little, a little shorter, more staccato. Yeah, they were getting in the way a little bit. Yeah, exactly. So when when we start to send him into madness, when he's discovered the voices of the birds and shit, we'll then spiral him upwards into madness. Okay, let's finish off this melody because the melody in the second half changes a little bit. Then it's going to go. We're concluding that melody. Once we've got this locked in, we're home free. See how quickly it is just to come up with a, a strong melody and a theme to your song. And that can then dictate the rest of the piece. I feel like it shouldn't have, there should be more of a conclusion with the melody, so let's get back into that. I feel like it, it ends on a high here like this. Da -na -na. Should come back down, hang on. And this will go back to the root note, which is C, and C minor, she shanty. A she shanty, a C, a C sharp, <laughs> a C, Sharp shanty. 
make it minor. Here we go. That's that's good. She shang a she shanty and she sharp minor. It's Sean Sean Connery. <laughs> that is a tongue twister. Sean Connery shang a she shanty and she sharp minor. <laughs> Uh, the sleepy madness is already descending upon me, let alone the professor. Okay, so, all together now. Yeah, um, so now we've got sort of an introduction of the professor and what he's doing, he's pottering around the lighthouse, maybe he's looking at these artifacts. Dan's saying we need birds, we do need birds, but how do we do birds? Fairy tale bells, and then we've got like a glockenspiel on the other end, and they're like little birds panning left and right, that could be fun. A whistle, gosh, I, well that is also ticking two boxes because we needed to do unconventional, unusual instruments, so that could be an idea actually. I tell you what I'll do is I'll just take, instead of playing it, this, and we'll make a count melody out of it. Okay, so we're going to raise that up. That actually sounds good on its own. Oh, they just go so well together. It's a bit overpowering, so I'm bringing that glockenspiel down. All we're doing with those is just fleshing out the, um, the melody a little. I feel like I'm there. I feel like I'm there. You said whistle. I mean, well, let's have a look if there is a whistle of sorts. We could also look at Omnisphere. Why don't we check Omnisphere? Because Omnisphere might actually have something if we type birds. You know, you never know with Omnisphere. It sometimes just throws up the goods. Put in bird. Okay. So let's come up with bird brains. Oh God, that sounds horrible. No, that's not the bird sound we're looking for. Um, let's keep looking. That's interesting. Oh. Gliding seagulls. I'm not sure we're getting anywhere with the um, the bird sounds, to be honest, guys. Birds in the water. That could be interesting for later on when he's going mad. I could try a whistle, because you were talking about a whistle, potentially. What is that? Found it. That's your bird sound. And there's even a psychopathic whistle we could go to later. Oh, that sounds like a bird as well. We found it, we found it. And there's also sea whistle. Oh, that's a bit mad. That's definitely the one, so N-Wave Nordic Whistler. Let's write that in. Nordic Whistler. We found our bird sound. Okay, so... You're gonna go there, play it all together. That is really cool, and it sounds really unique. You know, the brief asked us to do some unusual instruments, and we've kind of got that with the whistling. Directors of film scores, they love a soundtrack that is different, unique, stands out. So what I'm going to do is make it even more unusual and let's add an auto panner to it so it's sweeping across left to right in such a way as to convey the professor's madness. Listen, Merlin, we're going to put a flugelhorn in. I promised we would at least try it, so we will give it a go. Add in auto pan. So now we're going to make, we can actually draw the shape of the panning. We're going to make it sweep from left to right like that. That looks pretty good though. If you're wearing headphones, you should be able to... It's a bit quick, so we're going to slow that way down. So we probably want that to be... Uh, probably point, point 0.2, point 0.1, point 0.2. And you can see this little wheel is showing the panning, the speed of the panning, and you can see where it's, this little dot is showing. That feels good to me. It's going like this. You might not hear it unless you're in headphones, but we're panning it left and right. Nature of madness creeping in. If anything, that goes there. And we'll just copy those across like that. 
We'll probably turn up just a touch. I want to hear that. We've got unusual instruments. We've got that spiraling into madness. Okay. We do need to start bringing in the waves of the lighthouse. Yeah, I think what we do is we play it through. We drop it out slightly so he's discovered the artifacts. And then the waves are going to start crashing against. And it's all going to build up. And then suddenly it's going to be utter madness. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he ran out of eggs. That's why he's mad. No, I think the madness is that he's hearing these birds. He's suddenly, he's not only hearing the seagulls around him, he's actually understanding them now. No, I'm not sure that it's he's ran out of eggs. Um, now we're getting deep, Dan. If you're saying that he misses the the caress of a woman, he's feeling lonely. Yes, we could flesh out the backstory a little bit. We can, um, we can be at liberty to do that a little bit. I think the director's not gonna be too upset. So now we have a lonely professor, possibly a virgin, has never felt the touch of a woman who is now hearing the sounds of birds and he understands them. Um, what the birds are saying to him is really up for debate at this point. I'm not sure I know that story. Nikola Tesla fell in love with a pigeon. I don't understand. That. All right, well, what's missing is like a and I tell you what, we could attempt the flugelhorn. I don't care. We're, we're that far in the hole already. We might as well give it a go. So let's go. Let's just get the flugelhorn out of the way because you guys know you want it. I know you want it. There it is. God help us all. This is not going to end well. quite somber and sad actually when it's played like that I mean it's not the worst thing in the world it's definitely not the best either so right I've proved to you that flugelhorn absolutely does not work here a little exploration into why we should never ever use the flugelhorn I'm gonna go to Spitfire I'm gonna grab some strings here la, da, 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 da. It's basically a counter melody, a little bit slower, a simplified version to counter melody with the other one. Something like that. We're gonna quantize the ends so they're all nicely in shape and we're gonna pull that one back in. We'll just put that one up there as if we played it. Drop that one down there. And we need a bit of dissonance because that was another thing that the brief asked us to do. Uh, dissonant chords. Because you want to bring in the madness a little bit. You want to like tease the fact that this guy is about to crack, okay? Instead of the usual G major, we're going to throw in a dissonant no, and I can feel it. I just haven't got it yet. Hang on. I like... So it's like... Maybe it just sort of teases the, the wrong note a little bit. It, it just... It's a little bit off, you know? Yeah, I'm going to keep it. It's unusual and I like it. Do we double that up? to take that I think really that should go the second time around though yeah and then the th this time we're gonna get rid of that distance we don't want that anymore now we get the three part love it yeah this is great Admitted to falling in love with a very special white pigeon that visited him regularly. Reported to say, I love the pigeon as a man loves a woman. Oh dear. Uh, let's, not, uh, let's not dwell on that too long. The pigeon that he reportedly saw shooting lasers from its eyes. What is what is going on? Oh, Nikola Tesla is in the person who invented basically electricity. I see what you're saying. Well, look, you know, inventors always have their quirks, don't they? I suppose. We're going to hit a real low note as well. We're going to hit the brown note. There we go. Oh, there it is. Okay. And then what we might do here is linger that note on because I'm feeling that sort of Pirates of the Caribbean sort of. We 
keep that note on because now the waves are going to start crashing. I don't know how long for, but it's going to go something like this. Oh, Dan, change your pants, my friend, because shit's about to go down. The whistle. Oh, that's so much more eerie too, isn't it? Let me turn off the bells. Oh, that's good. I actually think we bring it in halfway, so I've just muted that, that's why it's white. Now we're gonna bring in some drums. We're gonna bring in the percussion. To start building up the madness and building up the waves crashing as the lighthouse. How do we do that? Action strikes. I like that eerie sound on the wind of the waves. This is gonna be good. But this is, this is where it's gonna start to get really Too many dums, dums, dums. We want it to be a little bit slower than this. Okay, cool, we got it. He's found the trap door. There's echoes of birds around him. There's a marker at the end of that one. Drag these out. And we'll just keep the party going, keep the party going. I'm also hearing some staccato strings like dun 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 as he starts to start to realize what these bird noises mean. Anyone who's just tuned in will probably be very, very confused with what we're doing, but that's fine. Oh, we could go low on the choir as well. Um is what I'm trying to get out here. Real low. He's discovering shit. Do you know what I mean? Monster Brass could come in to play that for another round. Bring these out like this. Monster Brass time. Where are you, Monster Brass? I really want to feel the fury of the ocean now. Well, if that doesn't make you want to change your pants, I don't know what will. It should stop there, so it should just be like do the usual like sort of Hans Zimmer thing. And with brass, you sort of play it. And it'll still dip a little, and then it'll dip a lot. And then we're gonna bring it back up in volume and it's gonna, you know how it goes. That sort of Hans Zimmer brass swell. There you go, okay. I'm gonna match that as well. Copy the automation from the volume. We're gonna put it onto the modulation which is going to change paste that in why you're not pasting there it goes that's going to be changing the velocity as well so it's going to change the actual timbre of the instrument might be a little bit too exaggerated so what we'll do is we'll select it and what we can do is scale it scale it down and then bring the whole thing back up so that it's touching the ceiling there you go Oh, when a brass player blows, it's kind of like, it's hard to begin with and it's sustained. So there is a bit of a peak. And what we'll do is we'll just smash that with even more Valhalla reverb, throw that shit in the hole. What else do we need to do? Because we're, we're sort of building up, aren't we? Something like that, maybe. I could actually bring that back with a retrospective record by doing that, and that's what I recorded while I wasn't recording. That was just the first thing I came up with. It sounds pretty good. I could probably do something better. Like a... That, to me, kind of creates the mystery and the discovery of something intriguing. Like, what is this, you know? So what we'll do is we'll put that down. Now, we do want that to be fierce, so we're gonna bring up the velocities of all those. Okay, I really like that, and I know it's gonna work when we start fleshing that out. Safe keeping up there, muted. And then we're gonna do it again, but lower. Because 
We're building from beneath on this bit. It's kind of like a sea monster coming up. And I think maybe even lower, so we'll just go like that. Then you just start to add. And then the last one will have all of it, a four octave range. I think it's good. I feel like it needs some waves. Thank you, Dan. That's what we need to set the scene of the lighthouse. Yes, it needs waves. So, okay, so how do you do that? Probably with symbols. Big crashing symbols is what we need. Thank you, Dan. Dan, you're the director now. You're the director of the film. Okay, so just tell me what to do, all right? True strike. We're gonna go for suspended symbols. Yes, okay, suspended symbols. So we're kind of bringing them in here. That's your first crash. A crash of the waves, crash of the symbol, all right? We're gonna smash it. You get all these beautiful swells. There it is. And we're gonna pump up the velocity. And now it's all about timing, so I'm just gonna put the click on. Royalties my ass, there's not gonna be any royalties. That landed exactly on bar 60, it's perfect. Throw that one in the hole. And we might add a crash as well. Oh, they sound like waves, don't they? That's cool. So let's add a one of those trashy metal hits, whatever that is. We need more reverb. Maybe even change that to bright. I want it to be nice and bright. See how it's got that aftermath echo? I really like that. I'm gonna just play it on its own so you can hear that. That's cool, that's like a big wave hitting. And we're gonna do that again. This time we might use just the trashy boy. Yeah. If you wanna get feral, which we do, you'd probably hit bigger drums and you'd probably go for something like damage. Uh, ensemble designer. So we want a bit more impact as I'm feeling like, yeah, we've got the wave. We haven't really got a big impact sound or something. Yeah? Something like that. I'm actually going to turn the volume up on those. I just want them to really slam. We need more of this. Bright again, because I want to hear the sea foam, um, like, on the crest of the wave. I want to hear that spraying as it hits. And we're going to crank that to 31, why not 31? Okay, 31. It's gonna go like this. Can you hear it? it? Sounds like you're getting drenched. Now we're gonna go double speed. Horn. A horn to create a little bit more drama as well. Something like that, so I don't know what I play, but I'm hitting retrospective record. Oh, that's a bad note. Okay, this, these are the 12 horns. They have a very good, like, heroic, but also impending doom nature to them and they sound great when they're doubled as well and then i'm thinking like a it doesn't go any higher so we have to come down we've gone a bit crazy with those ones i think maybe it'd be better starting lower Not quite there. There's your dissonance. Could we get more dissonance? Come on, we got we got to follow the brief. Something like this. Yes, we can go there. That's your last note. It's as high as it's going. 
more dissonance. <laughs> ah, more dissonance. My pads are still clean. Damn rabble. You never fail to make me laugh, mate. Let's add a shit ton of reverb to this as well. Put the brightness on. Put the seafoam switch on. Let's have a go. gonna put a very slight increase there. Dude, this came out of nowhere. I think that the brass here is a little loud, so I'm gonna take that to 4.5. I'm gonna bring in more monster brass to really get that ending going. Maybe one of those. Got that one horribly wrong. What we do is we bring that sort of to the boil about there, and then we continue to rise to there like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. And I'm feeling, let me cut this right down to one. All I'm gonna do is that. So it's kind of doing this. Dissonance. Yeah, totally. I mean, honestly, the, the narrative helps so much to put you in a box and narrow your creative goal right down to like a point and you can just focus all your energy on achieving that goal that's why having a narrative of story or a concept like i like to write concept albums it helps keep me on track but it's not it's not about limiting what you could do it's, it's it actually expands like a magnifying glass on a single thing and then you can really deep dive into that otherwise there's this like uncertainty there's this kind of you're floating around with ideas that might be, you know, mismatched and not really going anywhere. But when you have a real focal point, what we haven't done is a big stonking piano. Boom on every boom, if you know what I mean. So let's do that as well for the big crashing of the waves. Nice and loud. Have we achieved the goal of narrative? I think we have because he's spiraling into madness now. We haven't really got the bird sounds going on as much as I'd like. That's the only thing. And I've, I've just come up with another thing. Where we can, maybe we can represent the birds with a glockenspiel. La -da 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 Something like that. Just a really maddening descent. Let's see. Um, just that. Losing my mind. Because what this melody, it just adds a little bit of suspense, a little bit of mystery. It's almost like him twigging. Oh, I'm starting to decode what the bird sounds mean. Oh my god, I realise what is going on here, you know? It's a discovery. It's a, it's a, it's a light bulb moment. And we could have it on both sides. That's cool though, I like that. So this is him now realising what the bird are telling him. I'm not really sure how this works, but that's what the narrative is, so we can't really change that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, this is, this is really cool now. He's realising something's up. Wait a second. The birds. I understand them. That's cool. I like that. We could even introduce that just before so it starts to twig just a bit before and a little quieter and we'll bring down the velocity not the volume so we want the velocity to start tease in here i think just two and you know what the second one the second one should be on the right so it's like da 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 again quieting down because we're not quite at the peak madness yet all right don't show all your cars at once 
fucking yes. This is fucking great. I mean, what more could you want? I think it just is what it is. You know what? I'm just going to put a little bit of flugelhorn at the end because I did want to get that in for you guys. I really did. Oh, no. Why? Why did I agree to this? I'm already regretting it. I'll bury it in the mix. It is in there. It's going to get buried, but it's in the mix. All right, guys, we got some flugelhorn in there. What I might do is select all of it so everyone can see what's going on in it. Oh, my word. Look at this monstrosity. Happy little accidents. Yep. Guys, I think we're done. I think this is as far as we can take uh, Professor, what's his name? Lonely Professor Ignatius Quill Bluster. Do you know what? I'm going to narrate it as I go. All right, here we go. Lonely Professor Ignatius Quillbluster sits in his lighthouse upon the waves of the blustering weathered sea and he's obsessed with birds for some reason because that's what the AI ChatGPT told me to, to, to put in the story. He goes downstairs into the basement of the lighthouse and sees there's a trap door. He opens it up, thinking this is odd, maybe he lights a little candle. Down the stairs he goes. Yes, I'm feeling the eeriness. Hmm, something isn't quite right. What is this? He hears the crashing of the waves outside, building up as the thunderstorm outside builds and builds, mirroring his trepidation as he goes downstairs and finds what can only be described as bird artifacts. Not sure, but ChatPT did that one for us. The waves start to build up outside. He starts to listen to the whistling of the birds around him. He starts to understand what the birds are saying. The artifacts. Oh my goodness. It's a code. This is what it meant all along. Suddenly the seagulls are flapping around. The waves are crashing up against the lighthouse. And he realizes in that moment, oh my god, I finally understand. I understand it all. The birds don't want me to eat their eggs anymore. That was the whole thing. That's what they meant. That's that's what has happened in the whole along. And that was what the song meant. And that's the whole thing. And I'm done. And that is a really weird stream, guys. But we did it. We made this crazy thing out of a chat GPT story. I think that's a success. It's 10 o'clock on the dot. That was two hours of madness. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're watching it later, thanks so much for watching whatever the hell that was. I think that was a success. That was mad. That was cool. I liked that. I actually really enjoyed that. And it's an exercise in how having a narrative to go off can really put you in a little box, which actually breeds creativity. And there you go. That's it. I am the Bob Ross of orchestration. I will leave you with that. Thanks as ever to anyone who's watching uh, later on through Patreon. You guys are keeping the dream alive. You're supporting me. I appreciate it. God, I've had so much fun doing this. This is awesome. We'll do this again. Thanks so much for stopping by. Appreciate it. And I'll see you soon.